These are zombies. They're scary, gross, messy, and not pleasant to look at. Zombies are undead, but really, they dead. And here's the sad truth. You may have dead, ugly, gross, nasty code in your project. But don't worry, Vulture is here to save the day. So what exactly is dead code? It's any code in our file that doesn't actually get executed. This can be a problem because it makes our code messy, hard to follow, and debug. And this is where Vulture comes in. It shows us where the dead code exists. So how exactly can we use Vulture in our projects to get rid of that dead code? First off, I am using Python version 3.9.5. You need at least 3.6 or greater. Then you're going to want to pip install vulture. Then navigate to the directory where your code is. My pi file is just on the desktop, so we're all good to go. Here we have just a small little file. I import OS. I have an unused variable here. Underscore ignore underscore underscores. I like saying that out loud. You should try it. Go ahead. Yeah, right now. While this variable is fun to say, it's not the only reason I've included it. I've included it to demonstrate that Vulture will ignore dead code that starts with an underscore. We have three variables that have a similar root, so this var underscore, an unused function, a greeter class, hello world function that calls the class and has an unused message variable here, and if name equals equals main. All right, so we obviously have some code that is not being used at all here. So let's see what Vulture can do for us. In order to use Vulture, we just type into our command prompt or terminal Vulture, and then the pi file or directory that we want Vulture to look through. Here we see that it's returned the file path and the line where possible dead code exists. It even tells us what the dead code is. Here we see an unused import and some other unused variables, function, and so forth. And Vulture even tells us how confident it is that the code indicated is dead code or unused. So let's go back to our deadcode.py line one. Right here, the import OS. That is in fact not used, it is dead code, so we can remove it by deleting it. For now, I'm just going to comment it out because I wanna show you one more nifty trick in just a little bit. Then we go back and we see on line three, there's an unused variable. <laughs> go figure, unused var is actually unused, so we can safely remove it from our code. Notice on line four that this underscore ignore underscore underscores is not picked up by Vulture because any variable that leads with an underscore is ignored. And cleaning up our code with Vulture is similar for everything else. We'll look at Vulture. It says 60% confident that these variables are not used. Go back to our code, find it, and figure out whether or not it is actually dead code. If it is, we want to deal with it. In some cases, however, we may actually want to keep that code and not remove it. Your intellect may be superior to the machines, and so Vulture gives us a couple of options to ignore or skip over dead code. This could be handy if Vulture is incorrectly classifying code as unused, or if we didn't want to delete a certain piece of code for whatever reason. We've already gone over using underscore to tell Vulture to ignore the code. So that can kind of get messy. The other way is when we are writing out our command, we can specify options. So here we can specify the option ignore names, and then we can use a regular expression to indicate to Vulture which variables we want it to ignore. In this case, var underscore one, underscore two, and underscore three are perfect examples and we can use the regular expression var star in order to capture those three variables. And we'll run Vulture again, this time with the ignore names option. All right, now we see we only have the unused function and unused variable on line 20 that are being picked up. The other method that we can use to tell Vulture ignore this code is using a whitelist. So I made a pi file called whitelist underscore dead underscore code dot pi. And we can put any code that we want Vulture to ignore 
in this file. So I've already written out a little bit of code saying from dead code, that's this Python file here. We're going to import unused function, that's this function here, and then say unused function. We'll save that. So we're going to keep ignore names here. We could delete it, we don't have to keep it. But we're also going to include whitelist deadcode.py. Now when we run this, anything that was in this whitelist is no longer included in the response that Vulture gives us. So we just have line 20 message, hello world. And we can delete that if we wanted to. Let's save it. And every time you change your code, whether you remove some dead code or make some other alterations, you're supposed to rerun Vulture. That's because even if you're only deleting dead code, Vulture might be able to pick up dead code that it had missed before. So as you can see, there are different confidence levels that Vulture provides us, 60%, 90%. If we wanted to look at code at a specific confidence level, we can specify that with the min confidence option followed by the confidence level that we want. So I'm going to erase this ignore names and then we're going to say dash dash min dash confidence and specify the level of confidence that we want. For this example, let's set the confidence at 90%. We don't have to include the percent sign, just the numbers. And then it returns code that it's at least 90% confident is unused. That's great and all, but this is only one file. What if we have many files that we want Vulture to look through? We can do that by passing in the directory. So here on my desktop, I have a directory full of Python files, in the my resume folder so if we wanted it to look through all of these python files because that's all part of a single project we can say vulture and pass in the directory and then here we go we have possible dead code in the pre-refactor and the resume.py resume underscore fpdf.py tells us what this is so here's a different one unreachable else block 100% confident. So then we could go through our, our files and find that dead code. This is actually part of a project that I'm going to be sharing in the near future. Subscribe so you don't miss out on how to build your resume with Python. Thanks for watching.